A very special piece of historical art lines the corridor halls of Parliament's old assembly building. It's called the Kiskama Tapestry and is said to be 120 meters long. This tapestry was embroidered by more than 100 Kosa women from the Eastern Cape. The priceless piece of art tells the story of South Africa, starting with the Khoisan. But it's feared that the tapestry went up in flames in the Parliament fire. As we wait to learn its fate, Cape Town cultural tour guide Kate K Crane Briggs joins us on the line now to discuss this. She's led many tours through Parliament over the years with her company, Culture Connect SA. Thank you so much for your time, Kate. Uh, I, I, was, I was trying to put in context uh, the 120 meters. That's about eight times the height of that famous Hollywood sign in the United States. It's about 36 stories. This is an amazing piece of, um, of textile art. Uh, describe to us what it depicts and just how priceless it is. It depicts the story of the Eastern Cape from the first inhabitants to the first democratic elections, 1994. You're, you're so right. It is, it is priceless. Um, it was created by the Keys Karma Trust, um, which was started in 2000. And it was their first magnum opus, their first huge artwork, um, 2004. I saw them working on one last year on the COVID pandemic. Um, they are a feast for the eyes as well as being an invaluable historical document. Uh, sometimes when you look at a piece of art, most times when you look at a piece of art, it, it evokes emotion. Uh, when you <laughs> took tours through Parliament, what kind of emotion did this tapestry evoke? Awe oh, and delight as well as fascination. You know, like seeing Mandela with his boxing gloves and then seeing, for instance, the cattle, which are still very important and symbolic. And I've studied art history and been lucky enough to see the Bayer tapestry in France. And that was the inspiration of this. And as we know, that's also a priceless artwork. But it's, it's, it's more than that. It's an interpretation. And the people who worked on it in Hamburg in the Eastern Cape were assisted by artists. And it's a, it's a huge personal expression, as well as a, a recording not only of this part of the country, but the country as a whole. Now, this is not the only priceless piece of art that was in the parliamentary precinct. What other works are there that we should be worried about? Well, what's special about this collection is its diversity and its surprises. So it ranges from aprons by unknown artists and designers to work by British society artists who were at the top of the field at their time, like Philip de Laszlo. Um, so really exquisite artworks. Some of them will have been in the basement um, in a very uh, specially designed art and object a repository um, that I know from the colleagues I worked with the artwork office, they continue checked. Um, and some of the artwork is quite uncomfortable. Um, there are portraits of the apartheid leaders and then there are also records by the early, they're almost um, natural historians, the first scientists like Thomas Bowler, who um, recorded what the country looked like, obviously, before photography was invented. So um, there's also work by Le Valiant, who um, was an amazing pioneering French ornithologist, quite, quite eccentric too. Um, but I... I hope that given the brilliant conservation the Artworks Office were doing, they're, they're OK, um, because I know they were very careful about only bringing out these watercolours for my tours, um, and then they would go back to the basement, to the library, to be conserved properly. Uh, finally, Kate, what can you tell us very quickly about the history of the buildings? What have we lost there? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the architecture is, um, I think, uh, worrying too. <laughs> um, the, the, the architect who immediately comes to mind is Sir Herbert Baker, who worked with his colleagues on extending the parliament um, for the union in 1910. And uh, I'm 
I was relieved when I was there yesterday that the first parliament um, that was built when Queen Victoria granted the colony not only its own parliament building but constitution, that, that seemed fine. Um, you may know it, it's the one nearest the slave lodge with Queen Victoria outside. Uh, then the inspiration for the new assembly that was completed in 1985, that was inspired by the older buildings in the postmodern style. And it, it just walking on those in those corridors that you mentioned earlier, it's like stepping back in time. Um, and it, it, it's exceedingly worrying that it won't be able to be replaced. Um, and funnily enough, inside the old assembly, it was like being inside Westminster, uh, the Houses of Parliament in, in London. They based their designs on, on that. And it was very eerie as well, because it's where um, the heinous acts of Parliament were passed. Um, and that's why the Keys Karma was so special, having this phenomenal textile artwork around the assembly where mm -hmm. legislation happened. Yeah, there's so, so much so much history, good and bad, attached to that precinct and to the artifacts and art in that in that precinct. It's it's really a sad day for South Africa. Thank you so much for your time, Kate. We appreciate it. Uh, Cape Town Cultural Tour Guide, Kate Crane Briggs, uh, joining us on Newslink this morning. Steve